In this video, we are going to learn how to find things in focus groups using Envivo. First, let's understand what a focus group is. Focus groups are used to collect qualitative data by asking a group of people about their attitudes or feelings towards a product, service, concept, advertisement, or idea. Questions are asked in an interactive group setting where participants are free to talk with other group members. In this video, I will utilize a theoretically flexible approach to conduct thematic analysis on a focus group, which is the Brown and Clark six-step approach for thematic analysis. This is a majorly inductive approach to thematic analysis. Inductive thematic analysis, the researcher analyzes the data to get patterns of shared meaning, which are interpreted and labeled as codes. Eventually, the shared meaning in codes helps in the development of the themes. In contrast, the deductive thematic analysis approach involves having predetermined themes that are developed before the analysis, what is referred to as a priori, and then trying to fit data or codes into the already predetermined theme. Generally, thematic analysis is an ideal approach to analyze qualitative data when one is trying to find out about people's views, opinions, experiences, assess people's knowledge about a given topic, assess people's values or beliefs, or explore questions about how people interpret their experiences and the meanings they attach to them. For instance, in this study, the focus group I will be analyzing explores different experiences of people diagnosed with atrial fibrillations in Sao Paulo, Brazil. The six steps I'm going to follow in conducting thematic analysis on a focus group will include familiarizing with the focus group, second, generating initial code, that coming up with themes, fourth, reviewing and refining themes, fifth, providing clear descriptions to the themes, and that's six, writing the findings report. I'm going to go through the first step of conducting thematic analysis through the Brown and Clark framework, which is familiarizing with the focus group. The first thing that I should note down is that the focus groups include discussions conducted in Sao Paulo, Brazil, with people diagnosed with atrial fibrillation. So these are people with a certain type of heart condition. Now, the focus group I want to analyze is this focus group two, as you can see here. To familiarize myself with this focus group, what I'll do is just read through this focus group like a story. I won't skip anything because I want to understand the context of these interviews and to see the tone of the interviewee, the tone of the interviewer, how the interviewee responds to different questions related to the study topic, which is atrial fibrillation and all these issues. So I will read through all this to familiarize adequately with the transcript in a way that I can be able to come up with codes from this transcript. Now, after familiarizing with the transcript, I will go to the next step, which is generating initial codes. Now, let's look at how I generate initial codes. And to generate initial codes, I will need to first import this focus group into NVivo. So let's do that quickly. We are going to create a new project and call this FG analysis, focus group analysis. Okay. Then click on next. I want to display save reminder every 15 minutes. I don't want to auto save the project because and we all can lose your progress. So every 15 minutes, I'm gonna have a save reminder. The next thing that I want to remind you is that when you open in vivo, especially if you're a beginner, just ignore all these menus. We have these menus and this blue menu. Just focus on the files and the code section in the blue menu. We are going to import our focus group here and we are going to develop codes at this section. So let me go and first I close this focus group and then I import. I can go to files, then I go to my folder, then I click on the document and open. 
That's how I'm going to import the focus group into Envivo. We can also drag and drop the focus group at this section. Let me open the focus group here. Remember, this is a focus group that was conducted on people suffering from atrial fibrillation, which is a kind of a heart condition. And now we are going to start generating initial codes. This is the transcript. I've opened it. I'm going to generate initial codes. Here in the code section, I can right click on the codes area, create new folder. Now you see we have a folder called initial codes. Let's click on the folder and close this message. On the folder or inside the folder is where we are going to create our initial codes from the focus group. Let's generate some initial codes. We can see the moderator saying, good afternoon, thanks for coming. We are recording our discussion just to analyze and compare with other groups. Although recording, the report is confidential. Let's talk about atrial fibrillation and your treatment. Even if one of you thinks differently from others, it's important to put it. Do you know what atrial fibrillation is? Who could explain to me how would you define atrial fibrillation? That's the first question that the moderator asks the participants of the focus group. These are the answers which we are going to code. Now, I want to give you a major tip that you can use questions, okay, that the moderator is asking and put codes under them just for housekeeping so that later we can go and revise these codes and revise those questions and combine them to form sub -themes, themes. What do I mean by that? For example, do you know what atrial fibrillation is? Who could explain to me? How would you define atrial fibrillation? I can copy this question, the whole of it, by the way. Then go to the codes, create new code. Remember, this is not a code, it's just a question. I add question number one there and I click OK. Basically, what I'm trying to do is to use the questions as containers so that I put all the codes related to this question there before I move to the other steps of the thematic analysis. So this is question number one, OK? Let's see what will happen as I move on. Let's start coding. How would you define atrial fibrillation? I didn't know what it is. It looked, I looked it up on the internet when I saw the questions in my head. It was a cardiac problem, heart acceleration or not. I don't know if I understood correctly, a cardiac acceleration. So to this person, they define atrial fibrillation as a cardiac acceleration. And this kind of code, let me copy this and then highlight this whole section. There are two ways to code. I can drag and drop this here and just add the code. Okay. Or I can right click and go to code selection and insert the code in there and click on child code and again paste this or call this cardiac acceleration. Those are two ways, okay? Two ways to code. Let me delete this. And I want to just go back before I show you the technical or the technical aspects of coding. I want to define what a code is. So generally, a code is a label or an interpretive statement to information or a section of information provided by participants, which is important to our research objectives or research question. So basically, when we are coding, we are just labeling or tagging important sections of information that will be important or that answers our research question or fulfills our research objectives. With that in mind, you can see why I coded this place. You can see the question, how would you define atrial fibrillation? And this guy says cardiac acceleration. So this code, I drag and drop it in there. In the question as, and remember, I'm only using the question as a container. And then I want to right click and select aggregate coding from children just to add up all the codes. Let's see a second code so that you may understand what I'm doing. The moderator asks, what do you feel? I feel palpitations apart from problems I have. I feel palpitations. Let's look at this. They continue answering the question, how would you define atrial fibrillation? So what is atrial fibrillation? I believe it's arrhythmia. The heart suddenly gets out of step and starts singing another song. Sometimes, even for a moment that we are going through, psychologically speaking, 
because it always goes well but there are times when it goes up a little it goes down a little depending on our state this person can we can code this whole section or even this section alone and this person believes or defines atrial fibrillation as what as i highlight this section drag and drop it here and call that code arrhythmia remember coding is labels or interpretive statements to particular information that's important to our research objectives in this case we want to define atrial fibrillation so this person believes atrial fibrillation is arrhythmia now i drag and drop this inside select this drag and drop that inside my question let's have another code id1 what do you think is atrial fibrillation i'll give you an analysis of the name you just exposed to me and what i heard from colleagues at first when you say fibrillation it has to do with my arrhythmia back in the old days the word sounds like that to me this link links to the year 2000 when i have to have an ablation i have impression that this is very violent atrial fibrillation i feel palpitations apart from the problems i have i feel palpitations so this person believes that atrial fibrillation has to do with arrhythmia also so when we have a similar or the same code what we do is drag and drop this under a previous code we had already developed of arrhythmia so i drag and drop that there if we double click on this code you can see we are going to have two references which are these numbers here one two two references so basically that's what we do now the moderator asks another question how did you find out you had this heart problem so let's copy this question again let's go to the codes area right click create new code let's paste this question and call it question number 2 remember we are just doing this to contain the code so that when you do analysis for so many focus groups you are going to have all the codes organized well this do does not mean that this number 1 and 2 are themes no these are just containers of our codes we are going to combine these containers to form sub themes and themes later so you can see let's keep coding how did you find out that you had this heart problem i found out when i started drinking a lot drank like a old pig when tuesdays arrived i got sick and came to the hu i arrived here my kidney has stopped working and my heart was out of rhythm and that's when i found out i had these problems high blood pressure i already knew i had but then i found that my heart was out of rhythm so how did you find out that you had this problem they found out when let's read here I got sick and came to the only this statement we can code this as let me show you another way of coding we can right click go to code selection remember we want this code under number 2 and we want to call it child code and I want to call this how did you find out right click go to code selection and call this diagnosed in a healthcare facility diagnosed in a healthcare facility don't worry about misspelling i can always go in and right click and go to code properties and correct any form of misspelling so then i want to right click here and i want to go to aggregate coding from children okay just to add up all the codes let's see another participant i was working i didn't feel anything cardiac this was exactly in year 2000 i was seeing a client and in seconds i had a weakness that was knocking me down and i said to a colleague call my kids because i'm feeling sick my son told me to go to hospital in the emergency room i felt something was wrong they took me to santa catarina and everything started there with this movement i don't see a reason that led to this as he said oh i started drinking and i don't know what so how did you find out you had this heart problem Let's code this. Again we can drag drop or we can right click, go to code selection and just select here. I want a new child code. We can say experienced
weakness in the workplace and was taken to the emergency room. So that's another code. Again, if I make spelling mistakes, I can always come here and correct those experience weakness in the workplace. Edit that by right clicking and going to code property. So let's again review the codes. We are creating codes and the codes are interpretive statements or labels of information that's important to our research question. So the information that's important to our research question are the participant quotes, as you can see. If I double click, you can see the participant quotes. So this information is the one we are labeling or interpreting or tagging so as to get codes. So basically, I'm going to go through this focus group. Keep getting codes. Let's continue coding. How did you find out you had this kind of a problem? This one is related to how did you find out you had this hard problem? So this participant too says, at the age of 18, I discovered that I had alterations in my heart. I went for an exam for work and the doctor said I had to take a look at these alterations. This one, how did you, remember the question, the questions help us to get the right codes. How did you find out you had this problem? During a scheduled health examination at work, I want to go code selection, select number two, and now let's call this during a scheduled health examination in the workplace. I want you to, to notice something about the codes that I'm making. So let me first close all these and all these focus groups. And I want you to look at the codes and right click go to code pro properties and let's just correct some spelling mistakes here you can see some of my codes are sentences okay some of them are a few words some of them are one word five words a whole sentence okay and again this one still has a miss spelling examination there is a mean missing t there in the workplace now when you are coding a code can be one word two words three words that doesn't matter as long as the code is accurate so the code has to be an accurate interpretation of the interview or the focus group data this is how we generate initial codes in a focus group i will go through the whole focus group let me go back to files double click here and if we click on all coding, you can see the areas that I'm coding on. And I'm going to go through the whole document and generate all the codes and then come back and we can proceed from there. That's how we generate initial codes, which is the second step of the Brown and Clark six-step framework for thematic analysis, which is the approach we are using to get themes in this focus group. Now, I have taken my time to go through the whole focus group and do the initial coding. So let me show you all the areas I've coded. You can see all the highlighted areas are the areas I was coding. And these are my initial codes. So for example, how do you define atrial fibrillation? You can see some say it's a cardiac problem, an arrhythmia, heart acceleration, heart palpitations. How did you find out you had this heart problem? You can see those answers. How did you manage to or what do you believe causes atrial fibrillation? Others are saying smoking, then being born with bicuspid valve, have no idea, drinking excessive weight, getting rheumatic fever as a child. We have so many causes of atrial fibrillation according to the participants in the focus group. Basically, in the initial coding, you can see what I'm doing is capturing the questions, okay? The questions the moderator is asking, then adding the codes below the questions, which are the answers, as I just showed you previously. Now, we are going to revise these codes, and that's what I did here. By revising, we mean going and right-clicking and going to code properties. We rename and re-edit the codes, and then if there are codes that have shared meaning, 
we combine them. For example, you can see drinking has two references. That means two people suggested that drinking is one of the main causes of atrial fibrillation, okay? You can see that. So just cleaning up, which is the revising codes. Let me interrupt this video for a minute and inform you of my services. My first type of service that I offer is consulting for anything related to qualitative data analysis using NVIVO. You hop on a video call with me through Microsoft Teams or Zoom and I will help you become a pro with NVIVO in a few hours. I also provide a done for you data analysis service. I do the manual coding and provide a data analysis report with the necessary visuals. Some kind of visuals I do include tables, hierarchy charts, and the framework matrix. Email or message me right now, details in the description. Now, after generating the initial codes for the whole focus group and revising the codes, as you can see here, I can move to the third step of the Brown and Clark six step framework for thematic analysis, which is generating initial Dims. Initial dims are also known as preliminary dims. So how do we do that? Let me show you. What we do is, now we start looking at the meaning that the researcher wanted to find out when asking given question. For shared meaning between different issues, we'll combine those shared meanings between different issues to form dims. For example, how would you define atrial fibrillation if you right click and go to code properties, we can add a description here and say how the participants define atrial fibrillation, AF. Again, now I will edit this from a question into how would you define atrial fibrillation? So we can see here, the main issue that the researcher wanted to focus on is the subjective definition of atrial fibrillation. So let's click on that. And again, if we make a spelling mistakes, we can always correct that. So, fibri, it's fibrillation. That's how we revise codes to start coming up with preliminary themes. Let's look at another one. Based on shared pattern of meaning, for example, what do you believe causes AF? I won't just to skip both because this is a video with a time limit, okay? So I won't go one by one. I'm just trying to show you the ideas I had. Remember, these were my initial questions and I was using them as containers to contain the codes. Now I'm revising them and sometimes I'm going to even combine the codes to form subdivs. So what do you believe causes AF? So the causes I'm adding the description here. So I'm right clicking, go to code properties and call this the causes of atrial fibrillation according to the participant. So that's just a description. I still want to edit now the, this one. What do you believe causes AF? So this one can be causes of AF. You can see I started getting some preliminary themes which I can combine. Then you can see what are the symptoms of atrial fibrillation. That's a question they were asked or the moderator asked the participants in the focus group. Again, if we go to code properties, we can say the symptom of AF according to the participant. And then what are the symptoms of atrial fibrillation can become? symptoms of atrial fibrillation. You can see the main hack is that the questions that people normally ask or the questions that researchers ask in the interview questions can form when they are edited, they can become the preliminary themes. Then we can look for a pattern of shared meaning between all those preliminary themes to form final themes. So let's look at the fourth step of the Brown and Clark six-step framework for thematic analysis 
which is reviewing and refining themes. And that's what I've done here. So basically, it's a matter of going in to my preliminary themes after I formulated all of them, as I showed you there. You can see I formulated initial or preliminary themes as shown below. We have alternative ways of managing altria fibrillation. Let's see that. We have associated feeding when participants take or take anticoagulants. We have atrial fibrillation definition, atrial fibrillation symptoms, causes of atrial fibrillation, which include drinking, excessive weight, hereditary factors, and smoking. Remember, these were the codes we began with. These are the codes. This is the preliminary theme. So medical staff definition of atrial fibrillation. There we have that. And that's how I came up with all the preliminary themes. Then I went to the fourth step of the Brown and Clark six-step framework for thematic analysis, which is reviewing and refining themes. You can see it's just a matter of editing themes and looking for a pattern of shared meaning between different themes and asking myself, are there some themes I can combine? For example, medical staff definition of atrial fibrillation and participants definition of atrial fibrillation. If we look at that, you can see this preliminary theme, atrial fibrillation definition and another preliminary theme, medical staff definition of atrial fibrillation. So I combine these two together to form one major theme called atrial fibrillation definition. Under that, we have one sub theme called medical staff definition of atrial fibrillation and participant definition of atrial fibrillation. Those are two sub themes now under the main theme. And for every sub theme, we have codes. Finally, we have theme sub theme codes. And to come from preliminary themes to final themes, which is reviewing and refining themes, what we check is the pattern of shared meaning. By having preliminary themes that are informed by our questions, doesn't mean we are using our questions as themes, no. Because as you can see, finally, we have to look for a pattern of shared meaning between the sub-themes to form the final themes. You can see also for theme two, we have atrial fibrillation symptoms, such as drumming and fatigue. Then we have another that theme called the causes of atrial fibrillation. You can see smoking, hereditary factors, excessive weight, drinking, and being born with a bicuspid valve. We can see that the shared meaning of different codes combine together to form the meaning of the main theme. Basically, that's how you review and refine themes. And in some instances, you can see we form sub themes. For example, medical management of atrial fibrillation and alternative ways of managing atrial fibrillation. Both of them were preliminary themes. Let me show you. Okay, you see medication to manage atrial fibrillation. And then we also have alternative ways of managing atrial fibrillation. Those two preliminary themes are combined during the process of reviewing and refining themes to form management of atrial fibrillation as a major theme. And then to have two sub themes, which is the medical management of atrial fibrillation and alternative ways of managing atrial fibrillation. Are keep doing the review and refining themes. Sometimes, some themes, they are, we can't find a pattern of shared meaning between codes to form sub themes. So, themes can be connected directly to codes. As you can see in the five participants process of discovering atrial fibrillation. But we also have another theme six, feelings about the diagnosis and the medication. We have participant feelings after initial diagnosis and associated feeling when participants take anticoagulants. These two sub themes are combined from preliminary themes of, you can see, participant feeling after initial diagnosis and associated feeling when participants take anticoagulants. So those two sub themes are combined to form one major theme or to encompass one major meaning of participants feeling about their diagnosis and the medication. Basically, we look at the preliminary themes and we look for the pattern of shared meaning between the preliminary themes. And when we do that, we start reviewing and refining the themes and we come up with final themes. Now, the fifth step of the Brown and Clark framework of thematic analysis is defining and naming themes. That means for every theme, I'll go right click, go to code properties. You can see I've already added the definition and descriptions. For example, Atrial fibrillation definition, 
we can see the description is how atrial fibrillation is defined by the participants and the medical staff. Okay, then atrial fibrillation symptoms, if you right click, you can see I added a description. The symptoms of atrial fibrillation according to the participants. We have to go theme by theme, right click, go to code properties and clearly define the theme for a third party who, who would want to understand the theme. How is atrial fibrillation managed? or how atrial fibrillation is managed is the description. I added descriptions for all these themes. And after defining and naming themes, I can go to share, go to export, export code book. And I want to export this code book for you to see right now. And you can see, I can get a code book that includes my final themes and clear descriptions of what these themes mean. Every final theme, has a clear description of what it means. And again, I can use this code book in my study. And these numbers files, for example, we only analyzed one focus group, one file, and then we have references. References are the participant quotes. For example, under the sub theme of medical staff definition of actual fibrillation, if you were to go to the end vivo and double click that under the first theme, you're going to see four quotes, okay? One, two, three, four. You can see number four, four references, four quotes supporting that subject. So that's how we define and name themes following the Brown and Clark six step framework for thematic analysis. Now, the sixth and final step of the Brown and Clark six step framework for thematic analysis is writing the findings report. I went and wrote a findings report related to the analysis I conducted with the focus group. You can see my report and I'm going to attach all these resources there. I'm going to attach the NVIVO. I'm going to attach the focus group itself so that you can practice. And I'm going to attach this findings report, the code book I just exported and any other resource. You can see the first part of the data analysis report is me describing the approach I used to provide or to produce themes from the focus group, which is the Brown and Clark six step framework for thematic analysis. And these are the six steps and we have gone through them one by one. I've also said that I used NVivo to manage the data, not to analyze, but to manage the data. You can also see my report has kind of tables and these tables, I obtained them from simply pressing control A on my final themes folder and then going to export, export list. And I export an Excel. And let me show you the Excel. This is the Excel that I got. And you can see it has clear themes, which can be in bold. I can put all the themes in bold so that they are easily visible. And these numbers, files, of course, I only analyze one focus group. References are the participant quotes, as I've already showed you, so you can see this is the Excel that I have just exported. And this is where I got all those tables that you see in my report. These are the numbers for every theme. You can see either a sub theme or codes under it. That's how I got that table. That's how I have the initial codes here. I have the themes, the final themes and how they were formed. Themes with their description. Of course, this one, I got it from the code book. And basically that's my report. The findings report includes all the themes that I found when analyzing the focus group and how prominent they were and the story, the sub themes under them, the codes under them, and trying to interpret what the participants meant or by providing different opinions on the issue of discussion or the study topic, okay? For example, you have the one atrial fibrillation definition. Again, you can see a table, and this is the table I'm showing you. I got that from this kind of themes just copying, for example, this section and inserting that. And we can see from the table, for example, for the sub theme of medical staff definition of atrial fibrillation, we have only four references, meaning four definitions compared to participant definition of atrial fibrillation, where we have eight. Basically, I wrote all that report and there's a visual I did there. This is called a hierarchy chart. For example, let me look at this sub theme one. For sub theme one, theme one, and it's in order to just number your themes so that they are well organized. 
For the Sublime one, if we right click and go to visualize and go to hierarchy chart of codes, you can see, and then select the sunburst here, which is the second option, and then go inside, you can see, this is the hierarchy chart I have in my report. That's how I made such a hierarchy chart. I've used hierarchy charts. Another thing I've used is the mind map. Okay, for example, let's look at the two atrial fibrillation symptoms. If we come here, we go to explore. Let's go to mind maps and let's go to call this number two, just a random number. So let's draw this mind map, as you can see in my findings report. What I did is I copied this. I paste there, expand this. Then I go to the child idea section, click on that. Another child idea section, click on that. I go to drumming, I copy that. It's just a matter of copy and paste. So I copied that. Okay. Then I went to fatigue, code properties, copy that. Control A, okay. So basically that's how I drew that. Then I formatted it without color and that's the mind map. This is called a mind map. That's the mind map you see in my work. So basically the findings report is explaining the findings and how they came about, how we developed the themes, how we developed the sub themes, and then getting a vi some visuals such as the hierarchy chart, tables, and mind maps to make our report more interesting. I'm going to attach this findings report so that you can read through it and understand how to get things from focus groups. Thank you. And make sure you watch all my other lessons so that you may understand and vivo. Remember, I provide done for you data analysis services and consulting services for any problem or challenge related to NVivo. Check the link and email in the description and talk to me right away. Thank you.